plans tomorrow for SpaceX to once again try and launch the first ever commercial launch with humans to the International Space Station. It scrapped its launch on Wednesday after weather uh, spoiled that, but fingers crossed for a successful launch here uh, tomorrow. For more on those plans, I want to bring on Tom Jones, a former NASA astronaut who was, of course, uh, part of the first human mission to the International Space Station here in this century. Uh, so I appreciate chatting with uh, with you, Mr. Jones, today. Uh, when we look at it, I mean, obviously, it's a big change when we think about missions of the past now shifting over to a private company in SpaceX. How big of a change does that really uh, amount to in your eyes? Zach, it's a, really a seismic shift for NASA to switch over its low Earth orbit services from a government-owned vehicle to, like the space shuttle that I flew, to uh, commercial providers like Boeing and SpaceX. So this is really important. It gets us out from underneath the Russian monopoly of transport to the space station where we've been buying seats at $80 million a pop for the last nine years. And now we get our own transport capability back. You know, if you're going to be a spacefaring nation, you have to be able to launch your own astronauts into space. And beyond that, the lowering costs of getting people to orbit uh, and hauling cargo to the space station, as an example, will drop the overall cost to the taxpayer of funding things like a return to the moon and then eventual expeditions to Mars. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about all the money that, that is potentially being saved, there was also a lot of money poured into these private entities when we're thinking about developing these. Boeing has their, uh, their Starliner. Uh, SpaceX, the Crew Dragon capsule, which will be on display tomorrow. Uh, when we look at it, uh, about $7 billion in taxpayer money went into these programs. Uh, what's your take on how that's actually paying off now as we finally arrive at the moment that these companies are able to put humans up at ISS? Well, first of all, we should admit that uh, they're about three years late getting this capability provided to NASA. And that was caused by some overconfidence technically by the two companies, uh, a lack of push from the last administration, and then Congress dragging its feet and providing the necessary funding. So there's lots of blame to go around. But now we're on the verge of instituting these commercial services. And I think that the, the, the message here is that you know we've got two providers now with competition between them. And if one goes down because of a technical problem or God forbid an accident, we have another one to get uh, uh, keep NASA on its feet and keep the space station supplied. So this is really important that we get this capability back. Yeah, and a lot of people are, are ready. They were ready on Wednesday. They really wanted to see it. And now uh, hopefully they'll be able to see it happen uh, tomorrow. One interesting thing before we let you go to, to highlight here as well, when we think about space has always been cool, but now also Hollywood taking note, potential plans here uh, to shoot something up in the International Space Station with Tom Cruise here also getting the backing, or at least the idea of this getting able to be, or being able to be done uh, from the current head of NASA. What's your take as a former astronaut in, in maybe a movie filming up there and what would have to go into that to get things right and be safe? It's a good development. I think it shows the commercial potential of the International Space Station. Uh, it can be spun off commercially, I hope, in the years ahead. You know, there's a company called Axiom that wants to bring a private commercial module up to the space station where it can do everything from entertainment to research activities. So the, the cruise movie, uh, you know, might be a great entertainment vehicle. It'll showcase some of NASA's capabilities. And I think it's important that we realize that low Earth orbit now is going to be turned over to the private sector for uh, tourism, industrial activity, research, laboratories. And then NASA can still use that base to go out on the frontier. I think it's more important for national prestige to still be out there at the moon and then heading towards Mars soon. But, you know, there's no mistaking the trend of moving from government completely owning the whole space theater to um, having a commercial take over these, these much used and valuable sectors in low Earth orbit. As, as someone who came up kind of in the old way of thinking in terms of what we were doing before and now seeing it play out in the shift that you're highlighting here, is there any, any fears in, in something that might be being missed by all these people thinking about space exploration and everything else? Uh, anything that you say, oh, I wouldn't be so quick on that one. Well, let's do what we can do well, and let's use the space station. And I, I think SpaceX and Elon Musk have proven they know how to get back and forth from low Earth orbit. But it's, space flight is never easy, uh, whether it's a SpaceX Crew Dragon or a Starliner or an Orion to the moon capsule. And we've got to remember that uh, this is a very unforgiving environment. So let's be careful. Uh, let's make smart um, decisions that are informed by the risk that we recognize recognize. And I think, you know, we're going to have to accept the, the risk and the chance of failure. That's going to be part of our future as well as these successes. Yeah. And Saturday, as we noted, the next chance at success, if not Saturday, if weather uh, gets in the way of that one again, next chance uh, Sunday afternoon as well. Uh, Tom Jones, former NASA astronaut vet. I well, appreciate you taking the time uh, and weighing in on all of this. Thanks again, my friend. You're back. 
Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.